Hello, everyone. This is Remy Chen from Penn State Industrial Engineering. Today, I would like to present ontology-driven learning of Bayesian network for causal inference and quality assurance in additive manufacturing. In this work, instead of focusing on the correlation, we focus on causality. So we know that correlation does not necessarily mean causality. For example, let's say today is a very sunny day and then you are walking outside with an ice cream in your hand. After two hours, you see yourself in the mirror that you realize your skin got a little bit tanned and also the ice cream in your hand is melted. So here we can definitely find some relationship between your skin is getting tanned and the ice cream is melted. However, from the knowledge or the common sense that we know that um, your skin is getting tanned is not the reason why the ice cream is melted. The, both, uh, the reason for both of them happen is actually because of the sunshine of today. So here we are, uh, instead of the correlation, we focus more on the causality. We want to find what are the reason, what are the actual reasons of, of some uh, specific quality outcome or quality issue in the adamant manufacturing. So again, in the uh, first big data revolution, we want to find the correlation between X and Y. And right now we are moving to the second big data revolution, which we call the causal science revolution. Instead of this equal sign that we uh, would like to study the causal relationship between X and Y, which is represented by this arrow here. So specifically in this research, we are gonna use the Bayesian network to obtain the causal relationship between the variables. And there are two main reasons. The first reason is uh, the Bayesian network is explainable in the network structure. Uh, a network is contained, uh, is uh, consist, uh, a network consists of uh, different nodes and different arcs. And here the nodes uh, can be our interested variables and the arcs can represent the causal relationship between them. And then the second reason is that when learning the Bayesian network, we can integrate some prior knowledge into the learning, uh, learning process. So in this way, we can not only have uh, the prior knowledge or from, um, uh, prior knowledge for learning, but also uh, some information from the data. So in this way, we will be able to find the hidden cause effect uh, relationship between nodes um, uh, uh, based on our interest. So again, in this research, we would like to understand the causal relationship between uh, different factors impacting the outcome in atom manufacturing to make the process more repeatable and reliable. And here we are combining the ontology, which is from the first principle, contains domain concept and uh, the Bayesian network, the automated machine learning algorithm to find the insight from the data. So a Bayesian network usually contains two parts. The first part is the network structure itself, contains a set of nodes and a set of art, arcs. And then uh, other than the network structure, Bayesian network also contains the global probability distribution uh, between the variables. So here is one small example of one Bayesian network. So here, let's say we have variable from X1 to X5. So the arcs are um, showing in this, uh, uh, in, in this graph as well. So from the structure itself, we are able to obtain some graphical uh, separations. So for example, there's no, uh, linkage between x1 and x2. So we know that x1 and x2 are separated. And also we can also obtain uh, different types of graphical separation based on uh, conditioning on some variables. For example, if we condition on the variable x3, that we're gonna break the linkage between node x1 and x5. So in this way, by knowing the information of x3, that x1 and x5 became uh, graphical separated. So the same logic can be extended to obtain the probabilistic independence between the different nodes. So to obtain or to learn a Bayesian network, usually we need to have two steps. The, in the first step, we need to obtain the structure. So here, by giving the data, we need to learn the structure. And then after the structure is obtained, combining the structure with the data, that in the next step, we need to learn the parameter of the Bayesian network. And then together, 
uh, combining the structured learning and the parameter learning that we wouldn't have a Bayesian network um, ready for us to do further analysis. So um, let's start with the structured learning. So structured learning, uh, usually previously, there are two main types of algorithm. The first type is the constraint-based algorithm, and the second type is a uh, second type is the score-based algorithm. So in the constraint-based algorithm, we usually use statistical tests to learn the conditional independence uh, relationship from the data. And the other, on the other hand, for the score-based algorithm, that we assign a goodness of fit scores for different network structure that we can obtain from uh, the data set. So um, both of the uh, algorithm has their pros and cons. So for example, constraint-based algorithms are usually faster, but is less stable. On the other hand, in the score-based functions that we usually, we usually do a lot of greedy search. So in this way, it's gonna generate us more stable results, but usually it takes way more time compared to the constraint-based algorithms. So these days, researchers are trying to combine the advantages from both type of algorithm and to create some hybrid algorithm. For example, MFHC or H2PC are two uh, state-of-art hybrid algorithms. So in both algorithms, we uh, first use conditional independence test to learn the conditional independence relationship from the data. And after the uh, independence relationship is learned, in the next step, we use the score-based search to determine uh, the direction of the edges that is learned in the first step. And then in this research, we would like to build our ontology-based uh, Bayesian network learning on the top of H2PC algorithm. And here, uh, here shows the pseudocode of our proposed methodology. So as you can see here in, the blue boxes, here are the places that we want to integrate the ontology information to the Bayesian structure learning. And then again, uh, this message, this H2PC contains two parts. The first part is the constraint-based algorithm, and the second part is the score-based algorithm. And at the end, we will be able to obtain a Bayesian network G. Uh, to validate or to test the proposed methodology, we will, uh, we, uh, fabricated this thin wall structure. Note that this uh, such a thin wall structure is very important in the design of heat exchangers. So basically we designed a different thin walls uh, on the top of a base with different heights and different widths and also printed them under different directions. So in this case, we will be able to see this, um, how is the quality uh, or, or how are the thin walls uh, based on those different experimental setups. So after the parts are printed, that we, uh, we can obtain some uh, different quality issues from the CT scan. So for example, here you can see some lack of fusion, some discontinuity, some porosities uh, that exist uh, in, uh, in the printed part. So from the STC scan that we extract the following uh, features as our uh, interested variable for uh, building the Bayesian network. So for example, we extracted the edge roughness, thickness uh, of the thin wall, the vertical deviation of, the, of each wall and this continuity inside each wall, and then also the number of the pores and the density of each thin wall. So, um, Again, the, uh, the, the, this figure shows the flow chart of our proposed methodology. So here we um, register our data, register our uh, CT scan with the CAD file, and then we uh, pre-process the data and extracted the feature. And then uh, after that, we uh, learn the patient network from uh, the obtained feature and then for the further, uh, for further uh, diagnosis. So uh, on so uh, on this slide, the structure on the left side shows the ontology information that we put uh, uh, we, we we put uh, in we, we put in for our Bayesian network learning, and then the table on the on the right side shows those are the variables that we uh, put for our Bayesian network learning. So in total, there are twelve different variables. And then the learned Bayesian network is shown. Uh, on this slide. So here we have two Bayesian network learned. On the left side, this is a Bayesian network learned 
uh, with the ontology information that is integrated with the learning. And then on the other hand, uh, on the right side, this is a Bayesian network structure that is learned without the uh, knowledge from the ontology. So here, by comparing those two networks that we can see if we don't uh, inform the Bayesian network, inform the, this automated learning uh, algorithm with the prior knowledge that we might have some extra edges. For example, here we are linking node one to node four. But from the knowledge that we know that both uh, node one and four, the contour spacing and the width of the thin wall are actually uh, are both input. So in this case, we shouldn't link them together. So we're gonna learn some uh, edges that is not supposed to be learned. And also we will probably learn some edges that is in a different direction. So for example, we want uh, our Bayesian network have the edge from the input to the output. But instead, uh, here we actually have uh, one edge from the output back to the input. We don't want uh, this happen. And uh, also, we, uh, pro uh, we, we, we sometimes have uh, those missing edges that um, are so to supposed to be learned if we don't put the ontology information in. So from uh, so, so from, from those two uh, network structures, compare them, we can see that uh, when we inform the Bayesian network learning with ontology, at least we are going to learn a better structure of Bayesian network of the causal information that we are interested in uh, compared to if we don't put ontology information. So after the Bayesian network is obtained, that we will be able to do uh, two types of uh, inference. The first one is forward prediction. So here, uh, by knowing what are the input, we can predict what are the output. So for example, orientation and width here are the input, uh, param uh, input variables that we have. And, that, and then here we are interested in the edge roughness. So here, let's say we want the output of edge roughness to be in the level of one, that uh, orientation at level three and width at level one is gonna have the highest probability that bring us this uh, outcome that we are interested in. And on the other hand, we can also uh, perform the backward diagnosis. So here, instead of uh, going forward, we go backward. In uh, here, by uh, conditioning on the output, for example, we want our discontinuity to be in level one. So what are the orientation we should have for our part? So here we can see that if the, con uh, is, if the discontinuity is at level one, the orientation, uh, level one is going to give us the highest probability uh, that, that, that we are interested in. So in this case, the backward diagnosis will actually help us uh, for, uh, uh, for, 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 for the design of the part. So in this uh, work that we are facing two main challenges, the first challenge is the how to combine the knowledge that we already have and the automated machine learning uh, algorithms for learning the causal relationship in additive manufacturing. And then the second challenge is how we can perform both the forward prediction and the backward inference in the same, uh, within the same model. So, uh, to address those two challenges, we propose an ontology-based Bayesian network model for the representation of causal relationship between added manufacturing parameters, variables, and uh, quality insurance and quality control requirements. So uh, this model supports re uh, re reciprocated learning in the identification of important variables and causal relationship. And at the end, the proposed model enables engineering and interpretations and can further advance AM process monitoring and control. And at the end, we would like to thank NIST and SIM3D for supporting this work and for providing uh, the data. And then uh, thank you very much. And then now we would like to take any questions. <laughs>